We are always excited to bring you another amazing episode of The Broadway Show. I'm Tamsin Fidel. We are on the road to the Tonys and the nominations are in. So let's take a look at some of this year's nominees. In the best musical category, the nominees are A Strange Loop, Girl from the North Country, MJ, Mr. Saturday Night, Paradise Square, and Six. And take a look at this year's most nominated musicals. A Strange Loop leads the way with 11 nominations, followed by MJ with 10. And with eight nods, the Lehman Trilogy is this year's most nominated play. For the full list of Tony nominees, head over to Broadway.com. A Strange Loop is now on Broadway. It's already a Pulitzer-winning work. Now the musical, with the book, music, and lyrics by Michael R. Jackson, is eyeing Broadway's biggest prize. Let's send it out to Paul Wontorek. That's right, Tamsin. In his 20s, Michael R. Jackson was an usher at The Lion King who dreamt of writing his own big Broadway musical. Now he's done just that as the big black queer and Pulitzer Prize winning A Strange Loop has now started performances at the Lyceum Theater. We sat down at the Time Hotel to talk all about it. Like all those black gay boys I knew who chose to go on back to my home. This is a over 20 years in the making moment. Yeah, just about. How does it feel when you go on a journey like that? It feels like it's sort of very incremental though, wasn't it? Yeah, I mean, because the piece started off as a monologue that I wrote when I was like 22, 23 years old. And at that point, I certainly was not thinking, oh, next step, Broadway musical. I, what that wasn't in my mindset at all. It was just a personal thing for me at the time. And, and then as I began to write music and then put that in the monologue and it starts to take shape, it, it was just a, a story that I was chasing. I was trying to capture a certain experience kind of in a jar. And it you know, it wasn't until after we got to Players Horizons and you know, it got the sort of the claim it got that it suddenly began to feel possible that something like Broadway could come after that. But that was, it, but I would be lying if I said that that was what I had been aspiring to the whole time. The truly groundbreaking things I feel like when, when they're written by the, by the people who come up with them, they don't feel like I'm writing a Broadway show. Right. They're just sort of writing from the heart. And I feel like that's very much what this was. Yeah, and also, you know, I had ushered for many years at the New Amsterdam Theater for Lion King and then Mary Poppins and then Aladdin. And I saw Broadway up close. I also did a brief stint flyering for Rock of Ages on the TKTS triangle. And so I just seen that up close. I was like, there's no way in hell that like my show with all my little dirty words and black gay, this, that, and the other was gonna like, you know, be on the great white way. I and I was fine with that. Like I had made peace with that, but so that's why it's so surreal that, you know, somehow there's been a shift in the culture and and uh, I'm able to step into that spot. Even though like while I was ushering, I was like, I hate this, I hate this, I hate this. It also taught me to really appreciate lots of different people and to want to write something that lots of different people would want to come and see, even though the show is about a very specific experience. So I, I'm really grateful for those years, even though at the time I did not see the value in it. What I love about your show is that it's very relatable. It's very specific to, I'm assuming, your life. I mean, when you, when you know A Strange Loop, I feel like I know you really well. Yeah. How accurate is that? I mean, that's the thing, the trick of A Strange Loop is that it's an illusion. But an illusion is, that, that doesn't mean that it's not real. I did draw from personal experience to write the show. I felt everything that Usher has felt. So I, I would call it emotionally autobiographical, but it's not a one-to-one -one ratio of my life, in part because I wrote it over such a long period of right. time that it's, but Usher stays 25 going on 26. I'm 41 now. I have grown, I have changed. I'm an artist and I made an artistic expression of pain that somebody else can take and use that for whatever they need to use it for. And that, that means a lot to me. And representation is powerful and you've created a piece of art that many artists will be able to use and... Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and I get so many messages from people, you know, some haven't even seen the show yet. They say, like, during the pandemic, I discovered your cast album 
and it was the, and it, it was the first time I felt seen or heard as like a, a a queer person or a black queer person or whatever. And like I can't wait to see it. And or like the young actors reaching out to me to say like finally there's something I can audition for that I can bring my whole self to. That those kinds of things are very powerful to me. What do your parents think of the success of A Strange Loop? They are some of the proudest people you ever will see. My mom is constantly on the phone. She wants to know every time if there, I do an interview, if there's anything in the newspaper, if there's anything happening, she wants to know how rehearsal's going, how, who's in it, who's out. Like, she wants to know everything. And my dad goes around showing articles and things to people that he meets, like at the corner store, grocery store. Like, they are, they are so excited. In the show, there's, there's Usher has a, a very tumultuous relationship with his mm -hmm. parents who are having a hard time accepting his life in New York mm -hmm. and, and be, being out. I guess it's safe to assume you've had an amazing journey with your parents. Yeah, I mean, like a lot of gay people, it hasn't always been easy. Right. But our relationship has evolved in such a beautiful way. And I think the show is actually part of it because, and this is where like it is mirrors, the, my life does mirror the show, is that there's a scene in the musical wherein Usher is talking to a tourist, this older female tourist at, at the theater, and she's like, live your life and tell your story in exactly the same way. And he, and he says that he's afraid to show his art to his parents. His sexuality he's already done, and that's, you know, gets received how it's received. But weirdly, the art is the scarier thing. And that was very true for me, because I, when my parents came and saw the show at Playwrights, I was terrified, not necessarily, not yet of like, oh, will they feel, how will they feel about the representation of parents in the piece, but like, will they just like the show? If they didn't like the show, just didn't like it, I, that would have been like, like so devastating to me, like more than like if it got panned by the New York Times or something. And they loved the show. And like, they may not understand every aspect of it, but they were so impressed by everything that went into it and like, and the story. And my mom like bought the, the, the published copy of the script and she like has read it like three times and she reads it and then she listens to the cast album and then she reads it again, she listens to the cast album. And she's just very invested in you know, what, you know, her child has made. And that feels really good to me because so for so many years I hid my writing from them because I was so insecure about it. We want to be free, we want to belong, we want either love or validation. What's the best thing about being a Pulitzer Prize winner? I know what's gonna be on my epitaph. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, that's dark. The best thing about being a Pulitzer winner it's the best thing that's about like all the aspects of the show is that knowing that taking my time creating this piece uh, is what got it. It's ultimately what earned its validation. That like spending and you know want a lot of time on one piece of art is worth it.